one of those things you only get to see when you get up early in the morning. You take a sunrise, majestic mountains, a little bit of cloud coverage, you end up with this Norman Rockwell painting looming right in front of you. Welcome back to another fabulous Throwback Thursday. Actually made it to our 10th episode today. That's awesome. So uh, staying with a regular schedule that I think works for me and is definitely working for the viewers. Getting a lot of positive feedback about uh, the series. A lot of people like it and uh, so I'm glad to keep doing it. Today we are talking about technology and specifically we're talking about GPS devices. We get a lot of them. On, uh, it's become very commonplace in the year 2020. You can go all the way back to my 2010 videos, and that's when I really started talking about the technology. It's been around a while, but it's gotten to where it's what I would call commonplace now. Um, a lot of the controversy's gone, whatnot. But there's a mis misconceptions that come along with any new technology, and that the biggest one with this one is, well, if there's a GPS device on it. You know where it's at. It should be easy. We shouldn't have to pay you as much because all, all you got to do is ping it and go right to where it's at. That's not the case. Uh, this is right here. A direct example of that. I'm out here. Well, let me just show you. 360 view of this area. Way out in the middle of... A lot of you guys that are in the city. We do a 360 view here starting it's facing west. I'm just going to pan across that south. You can see the sun coming up over there. It's about 8 o'clock in the morning. East, there's all the eastern mountains. And then due north. And that house up there at the top of that hill has a RAV4 in the garage. We've been out here a couple times and uh, we're able to ping it. We know it's here. I've talked to the father of the debtor. Let me get back in the car because the wind out here is whipping and probably killing my audio. So the reason I show you the surrounding area and did that 360 for you is to show you how remote of an area I'm in. And the reason for that is just a side note. My radio actually went dead as I entered this area and I was streaming music over my earphones, which is going through my phone over the internet, crystal clear digital over wireless earbuds all the way out here to a remote area and my radio couldn't even uh, transmit this far. It's crazy how technology has changed things. I mean, these things are completely wireless. I mean, you can't even tell I've got them in when I've got my beanie on. I've got these earbuds in that have microphones on them that allow me to be able to hear my ambient surroundings, you know, so it's not like I've got earplugs in. I've got speakers in my ears that allow me to hear music through them and also have a microphone on the outside of them that allow me to be able to hear my surrounding environment. No wires. I mean, it's like, this is like stuff we would have never imagined 20 years ago, that it would be this easy, this refined and we really have no idea, just like we couldn't have imagined this stuff. You know, we couldn't imagine that our screens would be that flat. You know, I mean, that is a skinny, skinny device that has a ton of power in it. You know, even our big screens, you know, we got screens this and even larger. You know, they've got 19 inch laptops now. I think they may even have up to 21 inch Alienware, I know, does some pretty big gaming laptops. And anybody that's aware, you know, that knows that stuff can comment in the sections below, but it blows my mind of what we're doing with technology. And that's why today's topic is about technology, because uh, where we're heading is unforeseen. And I, I just love it. I love technology and GPSs uh, come a long way in 20 years. I remember back in the early days, before there were even satellites up, that consumers had access to it was government only and military 
you know, we knew that satellite technology existed, but we didn't know where they were heading with it. And they were playing with global positioning systems and how to, you know, and, and, and back then it was within six meters. I mean, six meters is 18 feet. Now it's down to within a foot, if not less, in most cases, at any given time, our cell phone or mobile devices, I hate calling them cell phones anymore because for one, they don't work on cell towers. It's all digital. But these devices that we have that have global positioning systems in them at any given time we're connected to like seven to nine different uh positions in the sky it's not just a triangulation it's a it's a you know because the earth is curved as we're moving in real time these mapping systems these tracking devices all of it's just mind-boggling how accurate they are anyhow so what we're talking about is the misconceptions with tracking devices and this Throwback Thursday, I have no problem diving back into the archives and finding a video footage where I discuss the many different misconceptions about GPS devices and how they don't make our job necessarily always easier. Sometimes they even make it a little bit harder. All right, we're out on the late AM shift. Not quite AM yet, it's almost midnight. <clears throat> creeping hours that repo men go out. I try to avoid as many nights as possible. I repoed it only in the dark for probably 12 years. And I've shifted to a daytime repo man for many reasons. One, nothing bad. Most of the time, nothing bad happens during the day. It's more easier to deal with. Banks are open. You get a lot more resolves. Uh, it's just a much more efficient and smarter way to run your repo business. Any recovery agency should know that they should have a day shift and if they prepared against their night shift as far as accidents and lawsuits and accusations and act, uh, all that stuff like you know backing a vehicle into an impound yard in the dark just everything about dark is not good for repoing other than the concept that most people are home in the late evenings and there's less likelihood for contact uh, which means less sets of keys but also means less drama it's quicker and safer when you can do it without getting caught. But when you do get caught, people are pissed when they wake up to you taking their car. And uh, it's just much easier to deal with during the daytime. So we got a couple we got to deal with tonight, though. They're, they're, they're unavoidable. I even have a video named uh, Night Videos. Or not, <laughs> I even have a video named Night Repos. They're unavoidable. You know, and it's just an example that we're always out at night creeping. So, but I, I I'm probably 80, 20 in the last uh, two years, 80% during the day, 20% at night. That's pretty good. I like to keep it right around there. Whereas before I was, seriously, I don't think I could remember for many, many years the last time I'd repoed a car during the day because I just happened to be, I was a driver and I was on the night shift. And I was good at night. I love night. <clears throat> my dog, Layla, Layla is the word night in Greek. So I even named my dog my repo dog after night it's so important so here we are it's night it's dark we're repoing out creeping well three addresses and 60 miles later we finally found one way down here in Provo we scoured Lehigh for about 20 30 minutes and uh, had no luck up there so I cruised on the freeway down here and jumped off and that red uh, Honda Civic that we had the camera hit on is back here at the house. It's got a GPS device on it. It's not working, but we're going to go. It's, it's here. We're going to go up and we're going to see if it's a sticker or an automatic. It's pulled in. It's a front-wheel drive. It'll determine which way we're going to pick it up and what we're going to do. So. It is a stick. Doors are locked. It's got two car seats in the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna back up to it, hook it, lift it, have it ready to go, and then we'll open it up with the long reach tool and uh, put it in neutral. Put my flashlight away. Get my. Uh, Headgear on. That way I can have hands free.
Okay. You can break off. Neutral. Steering wheel. Seat belt. Let's get out of here. Corner here, so I have to turn once, back the vehicle out. Watch our six until we can turn again. Drop the drive. What we'll do is we'll slow roll it around the corner here, and then. Uh, Get it probably out into this Maverick gas station parking lot that's right around the corner and drop it there and then turn it around and get out of here. Looks like our wheels are tracking pretty straight, which is good because this is a narrow exit here. Well, I'd have to say out of all the ones I got today other than that BMW I'm glad we got this one because this one had a GPS tracking device on it that was not working so you always hate to lose those I mean you hate to lose any repo but especially one that you're supposed to be able to track no matter what called in to the Provo Police head on to the next one good job late night repo 130 in the morning all right so <clears throat> we've been tracking this Durango it's supposed to be out west where we repossessed it from once before. Um, I think the previous video on it was called Honey, Where's the Durango? It was a pretty straightforward repo where I walk up and the keys are in the vehicle. There's a vehicle behind a block and I back it around the vehicle that's blocking. Pull it out onto the main highway and load it up and go. No contact. They ended up getting the vehicle back. And uh, <clears throat> it's up for repossession again. But this time, they're blatantly disregarding the finance company's calls and uh, requests to uh, bring the account current. And uh, have actually been hanging up on the uh, loan officer. So he, you know, sent it out for repo and gave us these notes and said, you know, they're not, they're not scared. <laughs> they're blatantly uh, disregarding us and probably going to hide the vehicle, which is... Well, I'm glad that we put a GPS device on it. They have no idea the GPS device is on it. And the weird thing is the vehicle's been up north here, way north, um, a good hour and a half 
away from their home where we repossessed them once before. Uh, and so either they loan the vehicle to another family member or a friend. Uh, I, I highly doubt that it's them up here driving it because, like I said, we've been tracking them for a couple days now. And every time that we've, you know, pinged it, it's either been in a garage or uh, driving somewhere. Uh, twice now, I've gone out to two different locations trying to pop it in public. And each time I've gotten near it, it moves again. So uh, this is actually the third attempt. Or, uh, just coming up on its location right now. It's been sitting in on look, what looks like either a Walmart or a Home Depot or something. Anyways, it's been sitting there for like an hour. And I've been hauling butt to get all the way up here. It's moving again. I'm here with, at the exit. And it's rolling. So it actually looks like they might be actually getting on the freeway right here. We're right here getting off the freeway on this ramp. And it looks like they're getting onto the freeway, or at least they're crossing over the freeway. We're watching all the southbound traffic right here. Let's see if I see our Durango. But the city that it's been in at night in the garage uh, is, is actually out here in Roy. That's the town just west of where we're at. Actually, it looks like they crossed over the freeway right here on this bridge. So we're going to get off this access ramp and then whip a U-turn. So we're now behind them. And the house that they're heading towards out here in Roy, like I said, it's been in a garage out there because we've gone out to where it's mapped and the vehicle hasn't been right where it's mapping, which is usually an indication that it's in a garage somewhere nearby. And typically if you have a garage that has windows, it'll project the GPS signal out that side of the building and make it look like it's, uh, you know, right there. And then when you go to that location, the vehicle's not there. That's how I over time been able to figure that out. But you know, it looks like they're heading southbound right now on this road light we're coming up on so keep track of them and all we can hope is that they will uh we can get eyes on the vehicle before it actually gets to the address it's going to uh, or that they'll pull over on the way there somewhere a gas station or something make a quick stop and the people will exit the vehicle and we can do this repo we'll keep pinging it until it stops until we catch up to it well, it looks like it stopped Trying to figure out which side of the road it's on. Oh, it looks like it might be over at that Walgreens over there. Yeah, it looks like it's across the street from... Oh, there it is. I see it. Yep, it's pulled into the Walgreens parking lot. Make sure there's nobody inside it. Looks like we're going to get a clean hook on it. <clears throat> Pull in right here. Pull wide so I can see through the front. Yeah, there's nobody sitting in there. We're going to get a nice clean hook on this thing. So a repossession for Yep. Are you Jason? Oh, 
Okay. I'm not Jason, I'm Jana. Oh, okay. Um, well, you know who Jason is then, right? Huh? You know who Jason is then? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's got a loan with the finance company on this and hasn't been making the payment. And so they've asked us to pick it up. He hasn't made the payment. Yeah. He hasn't made it yet. No. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm calling my ex. He supposedly paid it. Oh, really? Because I told my girl, I'm taking the money down to pay it. Oh, no, I paid it. Don't worry about it. You gotta love exes. Yeah, I just barely paid $500 a year. Wow. Well, once again, that was GPS tracking technology at its finest. Another vehicle that we would have probably lost, or at least spent a lot more time looking for, had we uh, not had the technology available to us. They were able to drive right to it, we tracked them in real time, they pulled over to Walgreens before heading towards that house where the garage is at, and uh, we got hooked clean. They came out while we were doing it, we talked to them for a second. It turns out she was with uh, another friend, uh, it was not her husband, and uh, but she, we confirmed that she is the code getter, and so we were able to talk to her about you know what was going on and why we were taking it and all that. Not really clean. We got keys from her. Get it transported. We're going to go uh, work on that uh, Denali. Yeah, we got a key already made for it. Let's see if we can't get that thing. We get picked up tonight. Okay, so it is now the following Monday morning. Uh, about 10.30, just got a notification on my smartphone that uh, that Yukon Denali is out of the garage and now moving. We've got a GPS device on it. It sat there for the last four days just doing nothing. Nobody drove it, never came in and out of the garage. It just sat there. It's starting to look like maybe they were just going to leave it in the garage until they refiled their bankruptcy. Uh, we've gotten on the phone with their uh, bankruptcy attorney, the uh, lien holders, and they've checked in the uh, Utah Pacer system and said that there is no refiling as of this morning. And they did not refile last weekend, so we're good to go as far as picking it up. Looks like it's right here off this uh, exit off the freeway coming into Salt Lake City. Probably doing some shopping. It's a, they're in a shopping district, and being that we're so close to Christmas, we get this a lot this time of year where we're tracking people via GPS. We find that typically we're tracking them from shopping center to shopping center, and they're doing all their Christmas shopping. Which kind of, you know, we get a lot of comments from people that are like, well, if they can afford to go Christmas shopping, why can't they make their car payment? And it's not always that simple. I mean, it sounds easy just to be able to say that, but there's a lot more dynamics involved. In this case, because it's a bankruptcy discharge, my guess is they're not making the payment because of the bankruptcy, uh, and they're probably just haven't been notified yet that it's been discharged, and uh, they, <clears throat> it's up to them to get back in contact with the finance company after a bankruptcy. There's certain laws that inhibit the lien holders from contacting them once the bankruptcy process has started. So there's a lot of things and a lot of dynamics that people aren't aware of. And so it's easy to say, well, what are they out Christmas shopping and not making their car payment? In some cases, that is the case. They should be making their car payments and Christmas shopping. But in this case, I uh, can kind of understand where the, everything's at and stuff. Most likely there's not going to be contact on this one because we're going to be getting it out of a public parking lot here. Zoom in a little bit here and see if we can figure out which part of the parking lot it's in. Looks like it's right off this first corner here. Uh, we're looking for a gray Denali. Let's see if we can get a better locate on this sucker. There's a Yukon Denali, but that is not our plate. Alright, there it is right there. We're looking for a tan one, and it's actually the dark charcoal gray. Make sure that lady's not getting ready to get in it with all those kids. A key for it, so I'm gonna pull over here where we can line up straight with it. Not be in a parking spot, we'll just drive it over to this location.